when you're building your Dolby Atmos setup, one of the main components is your AV receiver. In this episode, I tell you why I chose the Yamaha Avantage RX 3070 for my Dolby Atmos setup. What's going on, Tech Squad? Andrew Edwards here, editor in chief for GearLive.com. With my boy, this is Techno Dad right here. Introduce yourself. What's up? I'm Chana D. I'm your Techno Dad. Let him know who you are, what you do, where you're from. I'm from Mammoth Lakes, California, in the house. And I specialize in home theater, like 4K home theater. Right. And 4K Blu-ray players and setting up some awesome sound. I mean, and you have a YouTube channel. Of course. That's what I meant, where people can find you. Oh! Not literally on <laughs> Earth. Where can they find you if they want to learn more? Search up Techno Dad, you'll see the T and the D, you know? And, and that's uh, it. That's it. Yeah. All right, so I brought you in here because we are talking about home theater. We're working towards the ultimate home theater setup. And I wanted to bring in an expert because even I have questions about uh, best ways to set things up. And today we're talking about, in particular, the home theater receiver, right? Right. The home theater receiver. Now we're gonna do videos on speaker placements. You're gonna be in there with me on yep. that. Yep. And then we're also doing obviously the ultimate home theater reveal. But today we're focusing on the receiver. Tell me, what, what is it about the receiver that makes it such an important piece of the home theater? Uh, your AV receiver is pretty much your hub, okay? Everything goes in, all your sources go in, whether it's PS4 Pro, Xbox One X, uh, 4K Blu-ray player, or your TiVo, or cable, or satellite box. They all go into the receiver, and then you got two outputs from this receiver. You've got your video and your audio. Audio goes out to all the speakers, video goes to your display unit, whichever. Why would you do this versus just plugging your components directly into your TV? Okay, let's let's add. You got. That's what most people do, right? Right. They, yeah. they, they they buy their TV. Oh, I have sure. three HDMI's. Maybe I need a splitter. I'm gonna plug stuff in there, and I'm done. Chances are, any kind of splitter that you can buy for like twenty, thirty dollars, mm -hmm. not gonna cut it, especially when we're talking about four K sixty and four 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 color space. Okay. For HDR, the splitter that you're gonna find in an AV receiver is gonna be a lot higher quality. It'll have HDR pass through along with all the specifications you're gonna need for an awesome home theater setup. And obviously, I mean, this is just my guess, I haven't, I've never tried it before, but you're not gonna be able to set up a true surround sound system by exporting the sound from your TV, right? You can do like a sound oh, bar, yeah. or maybe a sound bar with like a sub, and maybe virtual surround, but you're not gonna get true surround sound by plugging a component into the TV and then getting a the sound out of it. For sure, for sure. I definitely think that if you want a surround sound experience, you gotta set up speakers around your room. Right, right. Do it, yeah. do it for real. If you're doing it, do it big. Do it so, for real. Exactly. So today we're talking about the receiver that I chose okay. for the surround sound system. I reached out to Yamaha. They were kind enough to send it over for us to include in the uh, home theater package that we're doing. And this one is the Yamaha Avantage RX3070, which is supposed to be like basically one of their top of the line models. It's a pretty nice one. Yeah, it's, it's I pretty mean, nice. It's, so, got, it's got a whole lot of features going for it. Uh, 4K. 4K. HDR. Uh huh. You said there was a Dolby Vision update coming for it as well, if that's, not already. That's what I heard from some Yamaha users already. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's nice too. Eight HDMI inputs. That's so a lot. Anything you have, I mean, how many components are you gonna have? I think I've filled it all up all eight though. But still, I mean, yeah, it I takes mean, a lot to do that. You know, the average person, maybe three or four. Right, the key to all this, it's not even about the components that I'm plugging into it, it's what's coming out of it. We've got For a sure. Dolby Atmos 7.2.4 surround sound system. That's right. And um, that, is, in fact, is so many speakers that it required an external amp Yes. to get everything connected properly, which I didn't even know what I was doing with this amp. So tell me about amps real quick. Why would someone need, like why did I need an amp okay. when I have this receiver that can process 11.1 .1 channels? So when you're looking for an AV receiver, especially for a Dolby Atmos setup, you definitely want to uh, see how many channels it processes and see how many channels it powers. Okay. So that's the situation right now. So that's two different things. Correct. Okay. Two different things, okay. Um, your AV receiver, processes 11 channels, okay, but powers nine. So I can plug in nine speakers and then we'll get power. Right. It can process two more speakers. Correct. But cannot power them, therefore there's no way to plug in those two. Right, and that's why you needed the, the external amp. amplifier. Okay, and the external amplifier just takes care of powering? That's that it, it. That's, that's all it does. Job. You send in a signal, it puts it out to speakers. That's okay. It. 
That's okay. So, and the 7.2.4, by the way, means we've got seven surround sound speakers. Yep. We've got two subwoofers. Two subs, yeah. Um, the speakers are all sent over by Klipsch. Shout out to Klipsch for sending over the speakers. And then we've also got the four Atmos modules, two on the rear towers, and then two up front. And those are pointed at the ceiling. Another spec that you told me is important to consider when buying a receiver that I didn't even know about was watts per channel. So basically the amount of power it could send to each individual speaker. speaker. Right. What does that mean? Why is that important? Okay, pretty much you kind of want to know how much wattage is going to a speaker. When they tell you, you know, it's, let's say it's, it, what is it? 150 watts per channel on, uh, on the Yamaha. The Yamaha Advantage 3070 is 150 watts per channel. But then you said that that's only that's in only stereo in stereo configuration. Yeah. So not even, not no, even. I assume the more you plug in, the less power goes to each. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that does happen. So you gotta kind of have to figure that out because the manufacturers aren't gonna say exactly what what's going into what. They're gonna give you a two channel rating, and it's gonna tell you a two channel rating into a certain uh, resistance level, which is measured in ohms. So if you see like, it's like that weird little circle with the two little feet. Yeah, no one knows what that stuff means. <laughs> well, it's like a resistance level. Like uh, the higher that number, the less resistance the speaker will provide. Like with these Klipsch speakers, they're at eight ohms. And if you have a speaker that's at four ohms or two ohms, you're gonna have to put way more power into it. Oh, I got you. Because it's less efficient. Okay. So okay. that's something you definitely have to look at. You know, if your speakers are six ohm, four ohm, or two ohm, then you need an amplifier, AV receiver, that's gonna have more um, power output. Okay. So at 150 watts per channel, where would you say that falls as far as, you know, good, that's bad? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, that's very healthy. You'll have um, lots of speakers that will range at the 75 to 100 watt, like their RMS value, not a peak. If you're looking at speakers, it's definitely RMS is the number you want to look at because that's your continuous power. Okay. Um, and it's usually going to be a lot lower than a peak rating. And it's also a good idea to overpower the speaker just a little bit. Like if- So that won't damage them? No. You'll do more damage if you underpower speakers. Now let's talk about the DAC. Okay, the built-in DAC. DAC was another thing you mentioned that was uh, was great about the Yamaha. It's the ESS Saber something. I wasn't even sure what it even meant. So the DAC stands for Digital Audio Conversion. And basically, everything is digital. You're using all your HDMI. Right. That's all digital. Okay. So the ESS Saber DAC is a 32-bit digital audio converter. And that takes all your ones and zeros, digital. Right. Turns it into sound to go to the speakers. That's, Over the analog wire. Yeah. Okay. That's what it does. And the ESS Saber ones are really good. And for it being built into the Yamaha, that's great. A lot of AV receivers don't have a DAC that's that high quality in, you know, built in. So, Interesting. So yeah. what, do would people buy like an external DAC then? Yeah, you can. You can spend up to like, you know, $10,000 on an external DAC. Wow. Well, well this is, home theater. Okay. So we're not doing, we're not spending $10,000 just on a DAC. Sure. That's crazy. Yes. Um, but as you, as you said, the DAC that's built in to the receiver that we chose here is more than sufficient to power oh, the setup that we're using. Of course. Now, one other feature on top of everything else we just mentioned about this receiver is that since it's Yamaha, it supports Yamaha's MusicCast. I don't know if oh. you're familiar with that. No, I'm not. MusicCast is a multi-room streaming audio system. Okay. So the receiver can stream to nine different rooms. Wow. Yeah, so you can play music and have it streaming to different rooms of your house all from the receiver wirelessly. It's a wireless protocol. So would you need speakers for that? Like yeah, you would use you know, either MusicCast speakers or okay. MusicCast modules that you plug speakers into. Okay. I and mean, you can just spread those around the house. That's real cool. Yeah, that's that's really nice because it, it kind of competes with the Sonoses of the world. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's others too, but Sonos is the big one that everyone right. knows that does multi-room. If you buy this receiver, you can just buy the MusicCast modules and spread those around. And then you have multiple rooms that you can control audio yeah. in. And they even have an app so you can just do it right from your phone. That's fantastic. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Yeah, music in your man cave. Yeah, exactly. Out on the porch. Right. In the bathroom. You need it all over the place. Everywhere. You need it all over. I have, I have it in the bathroom. I have it in the bathroom. <laughs> so, hey. I love it. You're showering. You need music. But there you have it. That is the Yamaha Vintage RX3070. $2,000 retail price. You can probably find it for less if you look at some other resellers. 
But if you're going, if you're going to the big box stores, Best Buys or what have you, expect to pay two thousand dollars for this receiver. It sounds great. We've got the speakers hooked into it. We're going to do the next video talking about that whole speaker configuration and how to get the most out of Dolby Atmos in your home theater. Thanks a lot for being up in here with me. Of course, we appreciate man. it. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate this. This is awesome. I appreciate you dropping the knowledge on me, making me a better home theater enthusiast than I already was. Hey, you know, that's that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I do on my channel, Techno Dad. Try to help everybody out there understand the mess with all this extra language that you gotta deal with. You right, know? right. Break it down, make it simple. If you enjoyed this one, drop a like on this video. Don't forget to click or tap on my face at the bottom of the screen to subscribe if you haven't done it already. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Andrew Edwards, and I'll catch you in the next video.